Hey everyone, this is Kaidor, and I'm back to talk about the game engine I'm creating with the Julia programming language. Remember how in the last video I said, the way I want to improve the engine is by following tutorials. Well, in the time since the last video, I did make an entire game. You can play it right now if you're interested, the link will be in the description. I created a small 2D platformer to showcase the features of my engine currently. In this video, I'll talk about how and why I use a tutorial to create this game and how I improve my engine in the process. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into it. In the last video, I said I was going to be following tutorials to help me make my game engine much faster. Let's say there's a bug that's reported in a project that you're working on. A customer reports something that isn't working as expected. It's a simple fix, so you just go ahead and update the logic for the way the app is functioning in that area. So great, you fixed it. The end, right? Wrong. So it turns out that the blast radius for your changes were much bigger and you affected some functionality of another closely related area. So your product knowledge might not be as deep because you might use the app the way you think a customer might use it, not the way they actually use it. So in my case, I will be using the game engine, so I will know what to do and what to fix and how things should be working in it. So in software, this could be referred to as dog fooding. I've been able to make a ton of progress on my engine by creating this game with it. So this product is based off a tutorial by JS Legend Dev, who creates a small 2D platformer in Kaboom.js. So I like following tutorials for my game engine to make games with them because I don't have to worry about the design of the game. I don't have to worry about sourcing the assets or the sound down, or how the game game is actually going to play. I can just focus on creating a game and testing the engine. So let's actually talk about the improvements I've made on the engine while working on this project. When working on this game, the first big issue I noticed with the game engine was there was no sprite layer. So when entities are loaded into the scene in a certain order, that's the order that they render. What I did was I created a, basically created a dictionary with keys that were the sprite layers. And then for each sprite, we can assign a layer and then it'll get thrown in that. So the next thing I went through was I went through the editor and fixed a ton of bugs. Like I left it in a state where basically you couldn't use the editor and I had just been focusing on, focusing on the engine, making changes to the engine. And when I made changes to the engine that affected parts of the editor because a lot of the functions that the editor uses is basically just sourcing it directly from the engine code. So a cool thing I did was uh, I tried to test my game on a little handheld. I saw the opportunity to use it as a tool, very low level spec to try to optimize my games. I have it running you know, on this little handheld, you can hear the sound and everything. I was able to create an optimization where we don't render everything in the scene all at the same time, because in the camera, you're not gonna have the entire scene. I went from rendering 360 some entities to down to like 100. We don't have to sit there and render those sprites over and over, so we're saving some resources there. And finally, the last big update is that we can actually take a scene file, switch to it in runtime, where before we could only use one scene file and you had to load it at the start of the game. In that game, there's a start menu and then there's three levels. So you start at the start menu, and then it switches scenes, as many scenes as you want. It'll delete everything in the scene, unload all its resources. If you're interested in the engine I was talking about, it's called Dual Game. If you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate it. Bye.